morning. I'm Ty Hernandez. And I'm Hari Srinivasan. It's Wednesday morning, November 29th. Millions of working Americans have probably signed a non-compete agreement at one point or another in their career in order to get a job. What do you need to know before signing one? Earlier, our Taina Hernandez spoke with attorney Jeff Isaac, known as the lawyer in blue jeans. Good morning, Jeff. Thanks for joining us. So let's start with a basic question. What exactly is a non-compete clause? A non-compete clause, really what it does is it restricts people from getting another job. It's a way that the employer has intimidation has force in keeping or trying to keep an employer prospective employee from leaving that employment and going to somebody like a competitor well under what circumstances if they fire you or you quit well it depends yeah the, basically the non-compete clause is almost illegal in every state most states look at that and say you can't do that because it's an intimidation factor it's a way to kind of keep somebody in your camp and not let them do what they do best which is maybe their trade or something that they've actually been trained in uh, and actually our constitution says gee you're allowed to go and work for somebody else you're allowed to get a job why should an employer have rights to you forever it's almost kind of like enslavement so you know what happens if you don't want to sign this if you say well, listen this is not for me and that's the problem what happens when you're in an interview and you're wanting the job and the employer says you know I really like you I want you part of our group but you have to have this clause you have to sign this clause now the the employee doesn't know it's illegal they may be intimidated and they want the job so they're probably gonna sign it anyway the bottom line is most of the time they can leave they just don't know it okay and and Again, do these clauses try to restrict you for a certain amount of time, from here to eternity? What do they try to do? And, and again, well, what they really try to do is to keep you from leaving, period. But what the judges and courts look at is the reasonableness and time and nature and actual geographical scope. That is a lot of the test of what a court will look at is, is it reasonable in time? Is it reasonable in, in distance? Can you keep somebody from California going to New York or vice versa? But most states, including California where I'm from, they basically say it doesn't work almost in any case except for the sale of a business. What about some people who say, you know what, they're putting the time and money to train you, to make you the best you can be. You owe them something in return. Well, that's true. And employers really do have some right of protection. And what most courts will look at again is, gee, what are we really trying to do? If we're trying to protect the database or the confidential information, yes, they can do that in many cases. Or a sale of a business. You shouldn't be able to compete. You know, you've developed this clientele, then you move next door. You're going to get them and steal everybody and basically get, you know, not get what you get paid for but the bottom line is that the employer can't be a dominant kind of individual where they can't you know the employee can't leave that's right. not fair well Jeff Isaac I want to thank you for joining us and you really do have on blue jeans I, I like that okay, okay.